Today we've got, normally I bring um, special guests with me, but today we've got someone that's extra special. So we are going to do a little bit of introductions. Um, before I get into the dream of things, I just want to set some scene here. I know that people will start joining us um, shortly. If you don't know who I am, my name is Arunima and I am the Managing Director and a Senior Licensed Immigration Advisor at Ames Global. I am being joined today by a very lovely, fantastic Helen Kemp from Eastern Institute of Technology. Welcome, Helen. Welcome to our session. Thank and you, thank you for doing this. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you. Um, so those of you that are going to be joining us, guys, um, we will take this really unique opportunity to talk about EIT, the courses, why EIT, and why EIT is so unique. And it's got so many fantastic features that you've not known. And so we're going to try and sort of peel off some layers today. Um, and I think when I was talking to Helen offline, she made a really interesting point. We've been, I mean, the reason for the session is because I know that COVID-19 has been difficult for each one of us. Getting through the storm um, that has hit each one of us means that we've been affected in, in certain ways. Um, and so we are trying to give this option and bring this option to a lot of students that are within New Zealand or people that have been working in New Zealand and now are looking at upskilling themselves they have maybe not adversely affected in their jobs um, or they just know that they need to get into those areas of skill shortages to be able to get into those jobs. And so we try and bring you a suite of courses and we discuss those courses. And like I was saying, Helen made this really amazing statement earlier when we were talking about international students not able to come into the country because the borders are closed, which just simply means that there's those. Helen, do you want to just talk to me? I think you'll probably do a better justice on that statement. You know what I'm talking about? about the onshore students being able to come yeah and i mean eit the, the fact that eit has two campuses one in auckland and one in napier this is um i think a lot of people who are onshore are in auckland um this is an opportunity to get out into the regions and experience a different part of new zealand that's what you were talking meaning arunima I wasn't really, but I think you've touched on a really good point. What I was wanting to say was Helen, I think, said something really important and said, you know, you've got this pool of jobs um, and you normally have international students that come from offshore and they graduate and they get into, get into those jobs. On, uh, um, the yes. students are not able to come from the borders, but those jobs are still there. And this is a really unique opportunity for students within New Zealand or people that are looking at upskilling themselves from within New Zealand to be able to grab on to those skill shortage areas and look at you know those jobs. So that's what I was getting to. I am going to get All to right, the yes. a bit in a second, Helen, and talk to people yeah. as to why that's you know such a good option for them. But before I do that, I do need to introduce you, which I haven't done yet. Um, so guys, um, I know there's a lot of us joining now. Um, we are trusted education and immigration partners with EIT and have been for many, many years, which is why we're bringing um, EIT to you. I just want to take this. I think it's about 17 years. Yes, I know. I, I don't want to think how I've aged <laughs> in that time, but <laughs> 17 years, exactly. Um, so I just want to sort of set the scene here with, so Helen is the international marketing manager at EIT. She's responsible for Indonesia, Southeast Asia and Philippines. Now, Helen has been with EIT for 26 years. That's right, it's 26 years. Um, she has been in international recruitment for 16 of those years. So Helen, you set up the English language school in 2004, isn't it? Yes, at EIT, Yes. Which is when I met Helen. So 2004 is when we actually met. Um, and you've done quite a bit of work with my dad and you've traveled around. Um, and I think the most interesting thing that I wanna talk about is that you've actually studied in India, isn't it? Yes, that's right. And so I feel a real affinity with Indian students. So India is my childhood country. So that's a real plus for us here. Yeah. Who knew that? Um, so today joining us, we're expecting people from within New Zealand to join us. We're expecting people from India to join us. We're expecting our lovely people from South Africa to join us because this time zone works really, really uh, well for all those um, time zones. Um, so now, Helen, before we get into the scheme of things, can you just um, please set the scene here and tell me why EIT? What is the support that EIT is providing students? Um, obviously, we've got the Napier, and I will talk about the skill migrant and why I encourage students to go out um, out of Auckland right from the get-go. 
Can you just tell us why EIT? Yes, that's a very good question because Arunima is running these different sessions with different institutions and we all have our strengths. And the reason that EIT has done so well is we've concentrated much more on postgraduate and master's programs in a lot of the areas where we have jobs that um, people have managed to go out and get. So the IT is very strong at EIT and we have a very good, um, especially in Auckland, we have a full-time person who is an industry uh, partnership relationship manager and he's the one who helps students to get out there, he contacts industry and people can get out there and get jobs. So people who, just some examples of jobs that these um, students have um, got from our PG and Masters in IT, um, are like data analysis at broad uh, spectrum and if you're onshore you would know this company name, uh, business analysis, senior IT consultant, um, and all that sort of thing. I'm not an IT person myself, but um, I know these are really good professional jobs that students have managed to get. Um, so these are the we jobs have, because students, we've got the high school. Sorry, these are the jobs sorry? that your students have graduated into, right? So these are places. These are the jobs. This, correct. These are the jobs the students have already been placed in. They and I, there's a whole list of them here. I won't bore you with the list, but I'm showing this is an example of what our students are able to go out and get and are already in these jobs. So the IT, the business applied management, digital business and logistics supply chain are all very popular programs with our um, subcontinent um, students as well as Filipinos. Um, but then we also go into health science and we have the postgraduate health science and master's health science as well as master's nursing and we also have a pathway for CAP students going through the postgraduate and health science. So we're working at this higher level um, with yep. um, people who have perhaps done um, earlier study in New Zealand. And if you're looking sorry, at higher sorry, I'm, level I'm gonna study. Get into, I'm going to get right into these courses in a second. I'm going to dive into these courses in a second. But I'm just trying to, you know, just understand. And I think what you've just touched on, which is the industry engagement evenings i'm really interested to tell people about those because i think that is something that's really unique with eit and that's something that's really um you know not really talked about so for those of you that don't know eit offers these industry engagement evenings which help you with employability it connects you with the employ with the you know industries helen just tell me really quickly once again i know you've talked about it can you just tell me how frequently these industry engagement he evenings happen and what really happens in these evenings um, once a semester, um, employers are invited onto the campus to have a drinks and nibbles evening with our students who have already produced projects. They've finished projects, they put in the result of their projects on the walls around the campus and the employers talk to the students about what they have done. This is a great opportunity for the students to have the confidence to talk to employers for the employees to see what our students have actually done, what their capabilities are. Few of them, four of them do a presentation, and this is the intermingling between the employer and you the are essentially to connecting the employers and the students, isn't it? So you are actually that's essentially correct. bringing correct. them. I think yes. that's exactly what students need, isn't it? These people are employable, and they just need that knock on the door, that first foot into the door, um, which EIT is providing. I think that's fantastic. And I think from my perspective, um, as a long-standing immigration advisor, one of the things that I have advised people um, from the get-go is if you are looking at those out of Auckland points in your skilled migrant residence, so those of you that are listening, an SMC application gives you 30 extra points if you find a skilled employment outside of Auckland. And I always encourage people that if you have studied outside of Auckland, you have built up your networks outside of Auckland, the chances are that you will find a skilled job outside of Auckland rather than spend all of that time studying in Auckland and then suddenly move. And I think EIT offers that really unique space because you've got the campuses in Napier and I think you're probably the only provider around that area, Helen, am I correct? Correct, yeah, that's right. And I think the government is really encouraging people to move outside of Auckland and into the regions. And um, Arunima can tell you what the advantages of that are for your uh, future prospects in New Zealand, but but this is a really good bonus with these kind of programs out in the regions. 
That's brilliant. Now, um, Helen, we do obviously um, suggest EIT to a lot of students that it is it, where it fits like it's the right product for them. I do know that EIT offers um, scholarships um, to students and especially those people that are within New Zealand, you know, they may have studied previously, may have done, uh, may have had a nursing background, may have come here to do a health um, management course and now find themselves kind of stuck or you may have people that have gone into business and now are looking at sort of moving into the PGs or masters and look at the three years open work visa. Those people, for them, scholarship or bursaries are a huge thing because obviously, you know, pockets are tight. They're coming back to education. Do you just want to talk to us about um, scholarships, please? And what is the requirement for scholarships? So if you're coming in to do a bachelor, you get a thousand dollar scholarship on your first year of the bachelor. If you're coming into a postgraduate, it is also a thousand dollars. If you come into a postgrad, it is $2,000 um, and um, a ma uh, sorry, a master's is 2000 That's a one and a half year master's. If it's a two year master's, it's a $3,000 scholarship. There's no requirement for just no, you apply and get accepted. It's just a bonus to help you to want to come in and experience the wonderful opportunities that we have to offer at EIT. Fantastic. Okay. Well, I, for once, did not know that prior. So people that are listening, there is that option to really, you know, help you and, you know, try and work this for you in terms of um, being financially affordable. And I know for a lot of people that even the thousand dollars would help quite a bit. Um, there are, are there any options for part payments as well, Helen? So obviously with the onshore people, it's not an option for offshore. The borders are closed right now, but people that are looking to study in New Zealand, for them to be able to pay half the year and get half the year visa and show half the year living expenses is quite a huge deal, makes huge difference yes. for them. Um, is there an yes. option to pay half the year fees? Yes, yes, and if you're unsure, yes, that is definitely an option. But I need to say here as well, um, we are already a very affordable institution. So if you're adding the scholarship onto our already affordable costs, then you need to um, realise that that is a very good opportunity. So you just need to go and have a look at all this information, which we do have on our website. Yeah. And guys, if you are listening, if you if you have questions, um, please do ask them here, because even if we don't pick those questions up in the live conversation, one of us will be individually responding to your questions um, and you know addressing those. Um, if you have anything that's purely immigration related, this today is not the avenue to ask those questions. You're more than welcome to ask them in the comments, but I think use this opportunity quite sensibly. We do have a live Q&A tomorrow, which is immigration specific. So use today um, to ask as many questions as you possibly can about EIT. Um, OK, so I think that sort of sets the scene of where EIT is. Um, you've got campuses in Auckland and campuses in Napier. And so a majority of the courses delivered at both campuses. So how does it work, Helen? Yes, the, the postgraduate and masters and um, are, are delivered on both campuses. The degrees are only delivered in Napier. Um, if you're an IT specialist or professional, um, you need to have, look carefully at our program to see which courses are in. Um, uh, all of them are in Napier. Not all of them are in Auckland. So you need to look at it carefully because you, the IT professional, will know exactly what you want for the background that you're coming from. That's very important. Um, but yes, it's a matter of just having a look to see what's there. Um, I, I can't go into all the detail right here, but the opportunities are there for you. Um, I mean, I'm always suggesting people that if you can look at going out of Auckland um, and you don't have to be here for any absolute specific reason, use that opportunity. Your living costs are better um, and you do have the opportunity to looking um, for finding a skill job outside of Auckland if you spend so much time there. So I'm going to jump. So Helen, we have collected some questions from people. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and jump onto some of the questions and then go back onto the questions that we've collected so we can kind of work through all of them. We've, um, oh, so Zinia says that she was seven years old when you started with the EIT. That's not really a question, but nevertheless. <laughs> probably, um, I probably remember her in the uh, Chandiga back then. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Um, okay, so we've got uh, Pradeep asking us a really interesting, that's a really good question. So he's done a master's in power engineering in 2016, I assume from India. Um, after that, he's got an experience as an assistant professor. Um, so I assume he's based offshore. 
Um, he wants to know if he's eligible for the postgraduate diploma in management or not. So I think he's possibly, the question's a bit incomplete, but he's possibly looking at moving into management and he wants to know whether he meets the requirements of getting into the postgrad or the masters of management. I think you always have to look at what your objective is, right? Um, so it depends if he wants to be um, working in the engineering side or the management side. And as you say, it's not a completely um, finished question. It, definitely, if it's management, yes, definitely he can um, apply for the postgraduate or the masters. Um, but that that is, and it's always tailored to what suits his background. Um, but you see, if you come in with your own skill, in this case it's engineering, you're adding the management to it. So you're adding that. Um, and so when you come out at the other end, you have your engineering and you have your management skills there. Yeah. So, okay. um, so uh, Pradeep, yes, you know, the answer is that if you are looking at a master's, yes, that's an option that you can possibly look at. Um, and Helen's quite rightly said that it's the objective. And when we pick up students and when we are doing student visas, Finding the right course with them is probably the most important part of the process because you want to make sure that they start on the right foot. We don't want to set up a student to fail. Um, and so, you know, just working backwards with what your goal is and what the market here looks like are the questions that we will be asking you when we are looking at sort of what, what's the right course. Um, Preet here, Helen asks, does EIT offer cross credits for bachelor courses done from India? And that's a really good question because I've got a lot of questions around it. But yeah, let's address his question first. Yes, yes, we do offer cross credits for Bachelor of Nursing. Um, again, it's case by case as to how, I can't tell you a, a blanket statement, but it definitely um, you could have up to a year of cross credits. It's also dependent on the kind of uh, how, how long work experience you've had. But while we're on the nursing, um, we haven't really said much about the health science. We're finding that our health science has been incredibly popular for particularly our Indian students. You come from we any part of the health sector. Yeah, you can yeah. go into into this postgraduate and masters yeah. and get a, a job in the health sector. So just and to answer videos this about that. Some bachelor courses can be cross-credited, um, just depends on your background and has to be a bit case-to-case, -case. Um, but EIT does offer the RPL option, which is recognized prior learning. Helen, now we're gonna really, because that's exactly, and I just wanted to sort of address these questions. Now I know that EIT offers the most unique courses in the health sector. Um, I know there's post-grad diplomas in health sciences, which are very, very unique, um, probably the one of its kind. There's Masters of Health Sciences that EIT offers. Um, there's Masters of Nursing and there's Bachelors of Nursing. There's obviously the CAP course. So there's um, an array of courses. So I want to first look at the health sciences and I want to start with health sciences because we have um, had quite a lot of questions from people lately. In fact, I was just talking to someone this morning who's got um, who was here and the person may have previously studied, got married, the wife's from India, and the wife has done a GNM, which is the diploma in nursing. And they're now looking at sort of getting into either the health sector or the nursing um, you know, sector in New Zealand. So one, for someone who's done not a bachelor's degree, what would be your advice? The second one is that if someone's done a bachelor's from India, so they are a registered nurse from India, they've worked maybe for a few years, they maybe can't get the aisles to get into the cap or there is no space available. What is the suggestion from you for those two portfolios? Okay. Somebody who wants to go into the Bachelor of Nursing, they don't have that um, background. We do have a pathway program for them. It's a six month bridging program. It's involving nursing certificate um, in science. Second question. Um, if you, have, uh, if you haven't had enough experience, you haven't um, uh, got the um, seven IELTS, you've got a 6.5 IELTS, you can go into the postgraduate of health science and you will automatically get into a CAP program. You do not have to go onto a wait list. So this is, this is once the borders oh, okay. are open, obviously, all right? So it is a more expensive way to get there because obviously you're not just doing the CAP but it's a guaranteed way to get into the CAP program. Okay, so if I understand so this correctly, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Helen, because I'm just trying to process this in my immigration brain. Yes. Um, so if someone is here and they've done a bachelor's of nursing from say overseas, they cannot meet the registration requirements. Maybe there's no spaces in the CAP, they can't get the aisles. 
um, they don't have enough experience, and but they're still looking at pursuing nursing, they can opt for the postgraduate diploma in health science. And I can tell you from an immigration perspective, one, it will give you a three years open work visa post completion. So that's fantastic. It gives you bonus points for your skilled migrant residents. So that's great. But also after doing this course, it gives you a confirmed place into the CAP course. So after completion Correct. of this, do a six or seven week CAP course and get to a registration in New Zealand, am I right? Correct. That, uh, correct. And also, it gives you two strings to your bow because you've not only got your CAT registration, but you now have that postgraduate in health science. If you happen to change your mind or you want to do both, you've got more options uh, to work that's in right. the health sector or as a nurse. Be and that's also great because I know that a lot of these people may not actually want to get into nursing um, or they may not just be able to get into nursing because they've started working in support um, as support worker roles. And those um, positions, caregivers, healthcare assistants are now considered skilled. So that can provide you a fantastic pathway towards residence. And because you've got the three year open work visa, you've got enough time for immigration to process your applications. So am, I, am I correct? So that, correct. that's the PG. Correct, but to get into the postgraduate health science, you do have to have a degree though. Yes, okay. So they need to have, yeah, that's the bachelors from overseas that they've got. Yes. Um, yes. Talk to me about, Helen, so if we've got someone who's got, um, say for example, the diploma in nursing from overseas, and they want to study nursing here, is there an option for them to opt for the bachelors of nursing and apply for cross credits? Um, I would say probably not if they've just done the diploma. Um, there, there could be a chance of maybe two papers. Um, so there'd be two papers less. Um, that would be all I could possibly say. But again, it's case by case. Okay. So that is different yeah. to if it's if they're coming in with a degree. Yeah. So clearly the health science is really a USP. And if you are either yes. looking at getting into the PG or the master's and the master's will allow for the partner to go on a work visa, whereas a PG will allow for the partner to be on a visitors. And I think that's a really good solution for a yes. lot of people that are here that have been nurses overseas. Brilliant. Yes. Okay. That yeah. really sets the, that really explains that to me. Um, now, what I also do need to ask you is um, you talked about the cap program. Um, are there spaces in the CAP program that people can get directly into, or does it always have to be the through the PGs or the masters to get into it? The no, when we're in normal times, the CAP is there, but there is a waiting list usually of a year. So now it will be like two years because the ones who were going to come this year will actually go next year, so it will be backlogged. So the only way really for new ones is to try to come through the postgrad. Um, health science if that's what they want to do but of course there are other institutions who run the cap as well so they need to look around to see what's going to be open for them but it will be quite difficult i think after the COVID to get into yes, that yeah. um i want to shift them so the bachelor of nursing now. is probably the better way yes Sorry. i agree um, no, you are good. Um, technology doesn't allow, it gives you a little bit of time gap, so that's fine. I also want to um, pick up these questions because they're building up, but after this, I want to ask you a few questions around the digital business um, courses. And I know for a fact that with, you know, everybody working from home over the last so many weeks um, and, you know, everybody using technology and we as a business as well have moved towards digital business and digital marketing of our business, um, you know, and so I know that's a field that a lot of people are looking at getting into. Um, Helen, is there going to be a July session for international students? Unsure, yes. Yes. Unsure. And, um, and the students that are already studying, are they doing it online? Or is it still going yes. on? The students, yes, the students who are already in New Zealand are all doing it online. Um, they're continuing to do it. At the moment, we haven't had any um, news on how long they're doing it for. Definitely to the end of the first semester. We're not sure about the second semester yet, but that is on okay. sure is online, yes. Okay, sounds good. Um, in terms of intake, I do know that, Helen, um, AIT offers more intakes than just July and Feb, am I correct? That's, we have eight intakes in a year, eight intakes. So four in Auckland and four in um, Napier, yeah, for health science, business and IT. So would that be Feb, May, July? I'm just making it up. November? Sorry. Is that what I'm <laughs> yeah, Feb, March. Feb in, in Napier, March in Auckland. May in Napier, 
June in uh, Auckland, July in Napier, August in Auckland, uh, October, okay. two October when yeah. uh, Auckland and Napier. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's really good because a lot of people have got the visas expiring on the 25th of September, which have been extended due to the epidemic notice. And so they've got that, right. you know, either the August intake, if you want to be um, risk averse and apply sooner, or you've got the October intake, um, which can suit you. So those those are the two options for onshore people. Yeah, two, two October intakes, earlier one oh, and a later okay. one, earlier one in Napier, a later one in Auckland. Okay. Cool. Um, so then I want to get into the PG Dips and the Masters in Management and the Digital Business. Um, and I also know that you offer the Postgraduate Diploma in Logistics and Supply Chain Management, which you've told me that Correct. it's been popular. Um, and I know that there's a few offshore people joining us today. First of all, do you just want to talk to me about the digital business, please? I'm, I am personally very interested in that course because it leads towards you know, digital marketing specialist and all those positions in the digital sector, which are absolutely in demand right now. That's right. So the digital business can go either way. It can go the IT way or can go the business way. So you would, if you're coming from an IT background, <coughs> excuse me, you would be choosing the programs on the IT line. If you're coming from the business side, you'd be choosing the digital business you know, side on, on, on the business side. But the kind of jobs that come out of this um, are all, all the logical ones, brand and digital marketing manager, automation um, manager, e-commerce entrepreneur, um, startup entrepreneur, um, digital platform managers, that kind of area. Um, and it's quite an exciting program that we, we um, are going with. This is the first year of running it. We actually run the postgraduate and we run a one and a half year masters and a two year masters. And the two-year master's has um, the entry criteria is not as strict as the one and a half year master's. So that is so all our that's have, the difference. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So sorry. you could essentially sorry. have someone come into the PG course and then you know, so as to begin with, they come into the PG and then if they want to continue on studying, they can actually just go on to the next year of masters. Am I correct? Correct. So you can choose to do a one-year PG or a one and a half year masters or a two year masters. Now you would say, why would I do a two year masters when I can do a one and a half year masters? It's about your entry level. So it depends on your background. Obviously you're yeah. going to try to do a one and a half year masters, but the two year masters is trying to take the place more of people who used to come into the graduate diplomas. So the entry level is not as tough as a one and a half year masters. So one okay. and a half year masters, you have to have a B entry to come into that. The two year masters, you need to complete your degree. That's the difference. Okay. So I've got I've got another question for you, Helen. So if I understand um, this correctly, that the digital. So I'm just going back to the digital business. So you could have someone with a business background or with an IT background going into the digital business course, yes. right? Correct. They still have the same outcomes. They just choose slightly different papers. Correct. Well, um, the outcomes are you would choose papers that will go towards the business. So when you go online onto the EIT website, you can look at the program information and you will see that there's definitely a business stream and there's definitely an IT stream. So you would choose the papers that go according to what your interests are, what your background is. And that's where the job will be that you are interested in according to your background. Okay. So it gives you those choices. So, yeah, that, that's what we're, and our students are finding it very um, yeah, interesting and, and exciting. This is a really exciting program. Okay. I'm just going to jump back into the health sciences. So I've um, just got some questions, and I'm going through these questions. Um, some we've covered already. So um, it's obviously talking about, so we've got this one which says health sciences programs and what kind of jobs are students getting. And Kritika, if you've missed it, we've just ju uh, run through some of the scenarios where people can opt for health sciences. So you could lead towards a pathway towards becoming a registered nurse. If you've got a bachelor's degree overseas um, in nursing um, and you get a confirmed place in CAP, which is fantastic. Or you could even pursue getting into disabilities, um, services, support worker, healthcare assistant, personal worker, and those sort of roles. Um, have I missed anything, Helen? With the yeah, I think I think we're we're talking about management. You know, if you do the masters in health science, it's definitely a research based um, applied research in your area, and and the kind of jobs that if you're a lab technician, if you've done homeopathy, you've done 
dentistry, a lot, a lot of dentists and doctors who come into this program. These are professionals who, who could have been working in their field for 10 to 12 years. Um, they can come straight from a degree as well. So we've got that whole range. But the outcomes are definitely much more into the management research um, area. Um, the health support, etc., is there, but it can go higher than that. And I think um, after this is finished, you should go online to the EIT website and have a look at a video of a student. His name is Shardell. He's working at the Hawke's Bay um, Hospital now, and he does a very good video on his program and what job he's doing now. He's working in the hospital as a health manager there. Yeah, we'll just share. I get one of my team members to share that video. It's actually, I've actually gone right. through the video. It's actually. It's actually fantastic. Um, yeah. So that's really good. So that's I think that's that's definitely unique, um, and that's going to be quite appealing to a lot of people that have got some background in health, may not be really there, and are looking for those pathways onshore and offshore. Um, onshore classes are going to be running normally, isn't it? Um, because now we're in alert level two, so classes are not online. The students are in the class yes, now. They're still online. They are still online, and they will be online at the moment till the end of the first semester. We're still waiting to see what's how it pans out with the government. That's great. Yeah, I'm going to go into the viticulture now. So I know that that's the most unique course um, with the IT. I mean, it's the wine capital. Um, you've got the graduate dips in viticulture um, that can take you know, towards someone that becomes a winemaker. Now, winemaker, for those of you that are listening, um, is an occupation that's in the regional skill shortage area, um, and that's in specified regions, um, but that course does lead you into it. Helen, I really, really want you to talk to me about the course. Um, what's the entry requirement? What does it sort of lead? How 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 is it delivered? Is it practical? So we have the graduate diploma in viticulture and we have the graduate diploma in ideology. We also have a degree, a three-year degree, but I'll just talk about the graduate diplomas. Ideology is the science of making the wine and viticulture is about growing the plants to make the good wine. They kind of go together, but when you choose each one, you'll focus on that particular side. Your background needs to be a science degree. You have to have a science degree to come into this. If you're coming from a different degree, we have that science bridging pathway again, six six months, and then you can do the graduate diploma. This is only and done in Napier because of the core papers. What is that six months for? The six months is to bridge people to understand the science. If they haven't come from a science degree, they need to understand some of the basics of science before they can do these viticulture and ideology papers. So it's just a bridging program. Right? Like you can do it for the nursing. If you want to go into the Bachelor of Nursing and you haven't got a science degree, this is a bridging program for nursing as well, all right, to help them with their science. Oniology and viticulture, we have a lot of students from China and India in these programs, um, and particularly to Hawke's Bay where Napier is, because we're such a huge area for growing wine. We're such a big export place, um, and there are jobs. Very practical program. As soon as you arrive, and we only have one intake in February because it's seasonal, this is where the plants are growing. Um, you're out there straight away in the fields working for the first four weeks to get some experience, and this is paid work. It's part of your program. It's part of, it's like an internship, but that is because it's vintage and it's harvest time, and so you're straight into that work, and then you continue with your program throughout the year, and there's practical elements in there. They do trips, there's a trip down to Marlborough where there's another wine growing region, so you can experience the differences in the in the wines. But this, if you're into the science, you want to do something completely different, then this is the way to go. You do have to taste the wine though, you don't have to drink it, but you do have to taste it. I so you must awesome. know this before you start. <laughs> No, and I do know people that, have students that have done this course, and I know it's a really unique course, really niche. Um, and I've actually done their residence, and they've just you know gone out to start their own brands, work with some really big brands. So um, you know, it is it is definitely the right course for people that enjoy this. Um, God, Helen, I could have you uh, all day. There's so many courses that EIT has gone. I haven't even touched on the IT, and you've gone through those amazing placements that have happened in the IT space. So I want to take the next few minutes to talk about the IT courses, and I want to really talk about the bakery and the cookery and the culinary arts courses as well. 
Um, so with the IT courses, I know that there's um, the bachelor's degree and then there's um, the master's and there's the grad dip. I'm specifically interested in the bachelor's and the master's. So there's a lot of people in New Zealand that were placed and they were working that had previously done maybe, you know, IT courses. And they are now looking at upskilling because the job that was there is no longer there. And so master's is, you know, the option that they would be looking at. So my question to you with master's is one, how does a student know if the course is going to be one and a half year or two years? Because they kind of need to plan their funds. So they need to know this from the outset. Yeah, so again, it depends on their background, all right? So if you're coming from a, a computing degree, then you can get into a postgrad or a master's, okay? If you you don't have to have some some technical de uh, degree and background in computing. Um, unlike business, business is a bit different. You can have come from a related field, but in IT you do have to have that background. Um, again, for one and a half year masters, uh, you come in with a B average. If it's two year masters, then it's a completion of your degree. Um, a lot of our students have already got experience in the field, um, and um, but then some of them don't. So it, it's case by case again. But, but the IT, this is where our students are getting most of the jobs. And as I, I said before, for those of you who have joined more recently, I read out a range of um, jobs that people already have in big companies in New Zealand. Um, and some of them are international companies. So this yes, is a I've very um, practical lot, program. Which I've, and I've seen the placement list, and which is why I'm so interested in this course. So the, the master's offers an internship component, am I right? Yeah, um, so it, it's what well, your yeah, project, a project, we call an internship, where you have an internship and a degree, because you need the time for an internship. An internship is a whole semester out in the company. So the final semester of the degree, you work with the company, you go to the company every day and you do a project and you come back and you present it. That is a full, fully fledged internship at EIT. When you're going for shorter courses, programs like a postgrad or a master's, you can't do a whole semester in an internship. It's too short a time. So you are doing your applied research or um, your project is related to your field in the industry. So this person in Auckland, and we have one in, in um, Napier as well, they are um, the person who puts you together with the industry, puts you a placement there. So you're doing, you're going in and doing a project, but you're not there all the time every day like you are in a degree. So that is so a that's little bit different. That the provider. So that's something that you guys will help with. So the students not yes, left out. Definitely. We have a fully employed person who helps them to engage with industry to complete their project. So they're setting them up with their research topics. Yeah. Yeah. And I think those of you that are listening, I mean, I've worked with EIT for many um, years, and I think EIT is truly one of those hidden gems that you don't know much about till you actually know about it. Um, and I think EIT is quite unique in terms of the support that the students get. Um, for employment and that's that's the main reason why students are looking at studying here they do want that career and I think getting that first step in the door is like having your first baby or buying the first house isn't it and I think that's what you need the most help with so that's something that EIT has been exceptionally well in helping the students with um, so now just jumping back because I know we're getting to 838 just jumping on to the bakery courses I know there's some questions coming in and we've covered quite a few of those um, Helen so there's a level four and a level five. If someone, so I know there's a lot of onshore people and there's quite a bit of interest in people that are within New Zealand to pursue culinary arts and cookery and bakery. So if someone wants to just do the bakery course, is there an opportunity for them to just get into the level four and not get into the level five if they're onshore? Um, no, if they're unsure, I, I think, again, it's case by case, but I do have somebody who's already in New Zealand who's going to probably come to the level four and then do the five. You need to do the four plus five. If you do, that's one and a half years, and you can still complete with the diploma because they will have cross-credited the first part of that first year. So it's no point. You can't. You can't just come and do the certificate. I see the question here, if someone has done a level four New Zealand certificate in baking onshore, can he get cross credits for a level five bakery course? Yeah, they could come and do the level five if they've done the level four, correct, for one year. And as, as far as immigration fresh, goes. So if there's someone's fresh, fresh, they will do the, the is it a one and a half year yes. for the level four? Two, two years, two years. Okay. 
All right, because from an immigration perspective, bakers don't need to have a level five qualification. Bakers only need a level four, but I know that the way it's delivered, it's delivered as a two, as a combined program. So I just yeah. wanted to ask for an option for students. So that's fine. Um, and I think the next really important one that we've actually had people um, email these questions to us. So I just want to make sure that I do cover them as well. So if someone has done a bachelor's, so a BCA from India, Bachelor's of Computer Applications from India, and they came here to do a grad dip in business because that's sold as the best combination back in India. Um, and now they find themselves kind of stuck. If they are now looking at going back into studies, and I know this is quite unique, but if that student wants to go back into doing a bachelor's in the digital technologies that EIT offers, um, the bachelor's in computing, I think it's called, is there an option for that student to get cross credits? And I'll tell you why students would be interested in doing that, because if they can get cross credits, there's an option for them to actually have the three years open work visa later on. And obviously having a degree in New Zealand gives them bonus points. Um, so it is, you know, having a New Zealand degree has quite a bit of weight. Is there an option for them to get cross credits for overseas qualification? Yes, but I, I, my question would be, if they've done a graduate diploma, why aren't they going for the one year postgraduate, which offers That's amazing, fun. and then they, yes. you get your three year work visa. Yeah, so a lot of people would do that. They've taken it and they're kind of stuck in their careers because business doesn't really push you and they want to go back into IT. And so we will look at those options where people want to specialize in IT. Um, so if they want to go back into doing a bachelor's degree, is there an option oh, sorry. for an overseas bachelor's degree? Yes, sorry, you were saying if they're coming from a bachelor degree, that's not an IT degree. Is that what you were saying? No, so if they've got an IT bachelor's overseas, um, mm -hmm. and they want to do a bachelor's in New Zealand in IT, is there an mm -hmm. option for cross cutting Because yes. all papers are not yes. the same. Yes, yes, definitely. We, okay. we have quite a few doing that, yes, yes. Okay, that's great. Um, so I'm sorry, can I just, yeah, can I just quickly go back to the bakery? Um, we, you would be far more employable if you actually went and completed the level five because it offers, it's patisserie, advanced patisserie, which you put on top of the bakery. Just a small point there. Yeah. And also, if you do finish the two years um, and you are out of Auckland, um, you can get the post-study work visa, whereas in Auckland, you get it only for a year. Um, and if you just do the level four, you actually don't get a post-study work visa. So there's yeah. obviously a lot of yeah. incentives to give you some platform to look for jobs. Now, Helen, I see we're at 8.42. I did promise you at 8.40, I'm going to cut this off. So I will have to call it a day. Um, but I hope there hasn't been too many questions I just had so much to get through, um, and I really, really do appreciate you coming and talking to us. Oh, it's been a real pleasure, Anima. We've got such a long relationship, and um, we've been doing this for so many years, and it's just exciting. to It's a hard time at the moment, but it's exciting to see that we are continuing to do this. There are people still interested, and we hope that they will still want to come and study, and come and study at EIT and benefit all, all the options that are there. Absolutely. And I think I know for a fact that there's a lot of onshore people that are within New Zealand that are now being sensible with the course choices and their career choices and looking That's at right. aligning themselves with shortages. And, and AIMS Global has been one of those um, associations that um, have given so many opportunities to people and work so closely with us institutions. And so I highly recommend them. And I know that you will all now be able to have a lot more questions answered by talking to AIMS Global. Thank you very much, Helen. Guys, we will see you tomorrow. We've got an eight o'clock on immigration um, Q&A, so we will cover your really hardcore immigration questions. So that's all from us. Have a good night. We will speak soon. Good night. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Okay, bye-bye.